Hi everyone. I hope I assume I assume everyone can see and hear fine. If unless uh, unless I'm just talking into this computer, unless I hear there's a problem, I'm just going to keep on going. Um, so the, the talk today is is focused on the design and building of the freeform roof at the new B school down in Cape Town. We also talk a little bit about um, just freeform structures in general. You know how they designed, how they fabricated. Um, but it's mostly just kind of running through the journey journey from the start of the project to the end of the project. So my name's Andrew Spotterswood. I'm a structural engineer. I work at a company called uh, Elite Structures. So we do um, clad structures. So we do steel, normally it's mostly steel and glass and ETFE. We also do a little bit of wood and a little bit of cable structures, like cable facades. But it's always that... Um, it's the interaction between cladding and structure where we feel that we can try to be useful and try to add value. And, you know, we design build, but we always want to start sweating. We, we, we can't blame anyone if the design is difficult to build because it's normally our design. So it, it keeps us, keeps us focused, I guess. Um, so yeah. So just on the, on the, the B school is quite an interesting project. There's a, you know, on, in terms of the architecture, there's, you know, I can talk for quite a long time on that, but I'll focus more on the structural elements since this is a structural group. Um, but it's funny. So it's, up, it's on mid, mid campus, the B school. So design thinking, there's, there's three, three schools for design thinking, uh, one in, in Cotsworth in Germany, one at Stanford in the States, and then one in Cape Town. So the, the one in Cape Town has been going for a couple of years, but they didn't really have their own building. So the, it's funded, the, the project was funded by Hasse Plattner, a, a very, very wealthy uh, German dude. Um, so he, he was, they were in talks with UCT and UCT uh, gave them, well, got, got a small part of land there. Um, and there was, so the architects essentially got into a design comp comp competition to design the building. So, you know, design thinking is, is a big part of what the building is. So it's, you know, and it's this idea of you essentially take people from different backgrounds to different professions, put them in, a, in an environment and try to come up with real life solutions. So it's quite a fun, the, the, the purpose of the, the school is, is quite an interesting purpose. And I think part of the design thinking process worked its way through the 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 evolution of the of the project. So the, the architect which ended up winning the design competition was KMH Architects down in down in Cape Town. So they had a lot of you know they looked at a lot of initial designs and they 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 ended up with something similar to the to the rendering on on the top right of the the model. So this triangulated building with this free form roof that kind of wraps around all all four sides of the triangle and then it comes down. To form a facade in the the the, the front, um, and it was it, it was at about this stage where we got involved with with um, KMH Architects. So that's so they gave us this initial brief and said, "This is kind of what we're looking at doing. Um, can you guys help us from a geometry point of view and from a costing point of view? How much you know? Obviously, there's a budget for the overall project, but they were still trying to figure out." You know how to take that budget and, and you know spread it out over the, the projects so they can get what they want. Um, so our you know our initial um, responses with most engineers is we got to figure out you know what it is where we get in support. Um, you know where where where, where are the structural cores, um, and then also looking at um, interfaces. So where's the facade lines that got to be? The building is not symmetric, um, which is unfortunate. Um, and so, anyway, so uh, I guess the, the, the initial um, brief was just so we, we did an initial grid um, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the structure. Um, and then the architect essentially at this stage went back to the client and said, okay, here's kind of an updated, updated idea of what this building looks like. So still very similar to the original concept, you know, from a couple of months earlier, we just refined it a bit more. Um, but still, this 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 large roof wrapping over this building. So on the eastern and western sides, there's these two canopies that are supported by by longer tree columns, um, and the roof you know runs over the whole building. Um, so 
then kind of at, 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 at that stage, we then, you know, sort of finalized our initial brief. So we, we sized what the members were, we gave price in, um, and we started, you know, trying to detail some of the more complex interfaces. But the challenge for this route is that you not only did it have to create this sort of form, but you they also wanted out of voltaic panels on the on the roof section, which you can you know you can integrate them in, into glass, but it comes out it gets it it's quite expensive, and you don't really get the efficiency is not quite there. So what we did, and then also cost, you know, if you want to make this whole thing a big diagrid freeform element with glass with integrated photovoltaics, it's expensive. So we gave them some pricing. Um, and then what we ended up doing, we ended up workshopping with the architect and QS to try to figure out, well, how do we get this look, but, but maybe break it up into more cost-effective and more um, uh, easier to detail projects. So we ended up having this, so in, that, in this messy sketch on the, the left, the, the free form was this um, triangulated section, which is, in, on, which is green. And then the idea was that we would have kind of con conventional steelwork on this kind of eyebrow section, which we which 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 wrap to the point of the triangle, and then we would have a concrete roof that would that you could put the panels on. So our scope was just the we weren't the main building engineer, so we weren't doing any of the concrete work. We were just doing the this 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 element. So we ended up doing the um, eyebrow steelwork as well as the the freeform grid. Um, the next thing we were looking at is trying to optimize the grid. So we had come up with a grid that that, that worked quite well from the for the geometry of the building. Um, but we also we wanted to have a like have a lighter grid. So the top grid, the small triangle, you know, the small triangles there, but are about two point two meters, uh, the the leg lengths of the triangle, which is a typical glass panel. Um, but the the form, I mean, there wasn't. It's it's there's not that much curvature. So you could we could come up with a larger steel grid, which is based on sort of a four to five meter triangle. And then instead of having one piece of glass which matches exactly the structural grid, we could have four pieces of glass in one triangle. Um, so how we did that is we. Um, we essentially had, so the, if you look at the, the triangle there, you've got the one middle triangle and that we can, that, that we point fixed with, uh, with, the, with the row tool. And then along the, the edges, we, we had edge clamps that, 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 that attached on to the beam. Um, and then what we did in between the pieces of, of glass that weren't underneath the, the structure, um, because we had some differential movement, when you install in these things, you know, people are walking on the, 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 the glass, we had to keep it that we could seal it properly and we could transfer load um, down. We ended up having floating clamps, which essentially tied the open edges of the piece of glass together for when it was flat and then also acted as a dead load transfer when, when the roof sloped down. Um, so essentially, at the end of the design development stage, we were at a stage where we had the geometry mostly finalized. We had the most of the the interfaces drawn up. So the project was 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 pretty realistic, and we had we had given pricing, and so the thing we knew it was in line with what the client wanted. Um, so just to, I'm going to digress a bit here onto grid shell structures. Uh, because that's that's essentially what we were building. So, you know, when we're looking at grid shell structures, there's, you know, these things are often, you know, a lot of interesting shapes. And there's been a, there's been a lot of grid shell structures built um, around uh, the the world. They they all kind of share some similar features. So from a geometry point of view, you know, roughly speaking, you can you can break up these freeform surfaces into Optimize, you know, structure optimize and structure non optimize. So the the structure optimized are these, you know, those where you would those old uh, things where they would hang a hang a cable down, freeze it, and then flip it around, and then take measurements, and you can build these perfect arches and those. And um, you know, the sort of hanging forms in there, and then also when you've got a surface, and then you pull the multiple points, so you can create a very nice cable net. Um, so the structure is very, very, a very very efficient. And then the, the structure non-optimized, there's a couple of ways of re revolving or, or translating surfaces. Um, so you can create these geometries. And then the bottom right, these nerves um, surfaces, 
is is essentially you know there's a lot of um you know with with parametric modeling and all that there's a lot of ways of creating um more um, more freeform geometry that are less constrained by the sort of more conventional ways of doing things. Um, typically, with those geometries, though, you end up with, um, you know, you end up with a, with a double curved surface, which often you would need to triangulate. A, so the glass is planar, it is glass, and B, that you've got a bit more rigidity, rigidity in the structure. So, you know, very fundamentally speaking, these freeform grids are they're made up of, 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 a, of a node, then there's beams coming into it, and then a, then a panel. Um, and when you're working with the, with, the, with the geometry, you're working very closely with, with, with those three um, elements. Um, so if you're looking at, if you kind of break it, if you, if you go into the nodes, um, the geometry is such that you need to be looking at angles in a couple of different ways. So the vertical angle is when two members come together, with, if they if they straight or if they bend, if the members bend down or they bend up. Um, and that, that affects the geometry of the node. You've also got the horizontal angles, which is kind of like the plan view angles. When you're looking straight, straight at it, how how close the members are um, to touching each other. And then the Twist the angle. If you've got nodes at different angles, when the when the when the beams come in, they 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 come in at a twist angle to the nodes. Um, so so all three of those elements affect the size of the node. Um, and then as then regarding the actual cladding, you then got to look at the the fold angle of the cladding um, because on these three form surfaces, every angle is different. So. Just, I'm not going to talk on, on all of these things, but if you just look at the horizontal angle, so you can see in the picture with the circle with the node, um, you can see obviously the, the smaller the horizontal angle is, the members clash. So it looks great when you've got lines, but the lines are never just lines. They're always something with some width to them. So the way of dealing with them is either, the, the first thing is, you know, ideally get your geometry right that you can limit angles. And that's the, the, the plot that you've got on the right side just shows angles. So, you know, you, we would typically generate uh, geometries and then we would do a lot of optimizing once the geometry is made to reduce these angles because these angles end up, you end up having very large nodes, which are heavy things. Um, or adapters, and they end up looking kind of chunky. So it's you know it's one to understand from an architect they want to have these these lines going and meeting, but if you've got this this you know 150 kilogram chunk of steel there, it doesn't look that nice. Um, so a big part of the exercise on 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 grid shells is being able to a grid it in a in a in an, in an effective way, and there's a there's a whole bunch of ways of doing that, which I'm not 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 going to get into right now, but. You know, it's it's essentially looking at the form, it's looking at the edges, and it's looking at the um, uh, the interaction be between the glass and the and the structure. But once you've got the form right, once you've got the geometry right, I said yeah, you need to analyze these different angles for the for the nodes. And then same thing with the um, cladding is you analyze the difference is you, you analyze the fold angles and what and what we would essentially do is break these things up into increments so from from you know zero to to plus minus five degrees you've got one type of clamp that would work and then from five to seven you've got another type of clamp so you can then rationalize it and say okay we're we'll going to have these you know five or ten different types of clamps and we're going to put them here and here and here um, and if you know the fold angle, you also need to look at the, the glass itself because if the fold angle is too steep, you actually need to you know if it's if it's insulated glass, you actually need to step the glass in so your glass joint is still nicely parallel. Um, so these are the details that, and you don't want to be doing this manually because <laughs> there's there's a lot of room for error. So there's a lot of we've got some really great software that's been developed over a number of years that can automate a lot of this. Of this analysis and that drawings itself. Um, so if you look at just grid shell structures, the actual nodes, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of people do these things, and there's a there's a lot of different ways which they count. Um, so you can broadly break them up into single layer grid shell structures, which is just one layer of steelwork and four 
double layer, which is you know more like a conventional space plan where you've got a top cord, bottom cord, and the webs which which join them. The single layer space, well, it actually it's sort of more it, the double layer space frame started like in the 1940s. You know, Mero did some a lot of work on these on these uh, board and node systems. Um, the single layer is kind of a, a, a continuation of that. Of instead of having a top cord and bottom cord, you bring them together. So you just got one member, but you've got two bolts or you've got a weld. So it can it can it can transfer bending. Um, so very schematically, you've got splice plate nodes where you essentially have a splice plate. So you join them, you join the, the members with, with some sort of splice plate. So those are, are more cost effective because your, your nodes are quite cheap, um, but your load transfer and your, your ability to, to handle different geometries is a bit more limited. Um, the second way is um, end, end face nodes. Um, where you've got a, some sort of solid node and the, the beam hits ties straight into the side of that node. Um, so that way you can get a very you, you can get a very good load transfer and you can get um, a lot of flexibility on the on the different angles you know that we that we need to look at. Um, you know, so what we do at Leaf, so we've we've worked a lot with a US company called Novum Structures. So we used to actually be Part of Novum um, here in South Africa for like seven or eight years, and then we became a locally owned company. But we still work very closely with them. So the the system that we use is still it's it's an it's an it's a Novum system that 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 we've worked with uh, for for a number of years, and it's a it's a bolted system. So if you look on the on the on the right there, there are some guys who do fully welded systems, um, which we we generally try to avoid site welding as much as we can. So the, the bolted system we feel is a good system for what we're trying to get. So when we would um, you know, analyze different systems, on the top right there, you can see the, we, would, we would try to look at it in terms of geometry, like how, how much flexibility do we have in the form, in the horizontal angle, the, the vertical angle, and the twist. And then, then also on load transfer. So how, how efficient is the members at transferring moments and axial forces from one member through the node to the next member? Um, because these grid shell structures, you know, nothing's ever fully rigid. Everything, you get some flex on these things. So for example, we have, if I were to look at um, the nodes, so we would, we've done quite a lot of tests on the nodes where we would bolt them and then we would do a, a, a four point bending test so we can we can track the actual stiffness of the node based on, and then figure out also what what what, what that is. Um, and then we, we would also calibrate that with the part elements testing on the nodes, on the tubes. Um, because on these structures, the you know, I, I, I took the, the the picture out, but we've got a great picture of a of a freeform structure that failed, not ours, fortunately. But they don't, you know, you know, they don't fail one member. They, there's, it's normal global, it's only global buckling that you're worried about. So, so it it becomes a stiffness game of are you are you properly looking at the stiffness of every single connection? Do you understand the stiffness of your boundaries? And do you understand the form? So are you looking at because when you build, especially if it's a if it's a low rise arch. If you build it slightly wrong and you you know you're already at limit and you you you, you build the thing slightly wrong, you you know you're going to be a lot closer to buckling. So it's really important in these in these free form elements to be able to model the stiffnesses of each connection um, and then do quite a detailed buckling analysis on the structure to make sure that you're not going to have any any buckling issues. Um, so jumping back to the BCT project. So from you know once we had the geometry going you know then it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a question of of you know more typical engineering get the get the loading right get the geometry right um, once we had the the the, the calcs done we've got it's a, a lot of software that we can generate fabrication drawings from 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 wireframes so we we've got we can input the the um, geometry of the tubes the different angles what thickness what size. And then we can link that with AutoCAD, and then it can generate all of these drawings. The, the advantage of that is that you can, we can split out a series of fabrication lists. So CNC 
cutting lists for the beams, for, for the nodes, and for the blasts. Um, so the the advantage of that is, you know, that's you know we auto, automation. I think you you can't ever take away logical thought, and I think but the 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 generation of the fab drawings is something which needs to be very accurate. And if you do it by hand, I think it's just asking for problems. So I'd rather let computers do what they're good at doing, which is that, and let engineers do what, what we're good at doing, which is making sure that all of the inputs are right and being able to check the outputs and making sure that the that it's that the outputs match what they should be. Um, so essentially once you know that was a very quick two minute thing, but that's that's the process of then how you come up, you, you, you take your, your structure model, you generate a full 3D model where you've got all of the members in, and then you can gen, gen, generate cutting patterns from that model, and then you can you can fab the, 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 the items. And then it's a simple thing, it's just you've got a bunch of beams, you've got a bunch of nodes, and you've got, you've got a bunch of glass. Obviously, you need to make sure that the details work. So before we even get into the, into the fabrication, um, the top, you know, the, the, the top left is just a typical detail of we had a gutter, we had some glass coming down. So the main thing is getting offsets right, making sure that we've got the offsets from the working point of, of, of our steel work down to the supports. Because all of these structures are, everything's pre-made. So there's no tolerance in the actual system. So which means all of the site tolerances that you have between the, the concrete and the grid shell, that you need to make up in that connection. Um, so if you look at this, um, so we spent a lot of time and energy on these details. So we would, we would once we've got the, the geometry, we would work with the building in engineers on the concrete just to make sure that the geometry of the concrete matches the grid shell. We would give loads. Um, at those points, so then, the, then, then, then they could then engineer the concrete work. We would give embeds, it could be, and then with the contractor, we, we we make sure they understand they have to be in the right place, at least close within the right place. And then we would then, you know, from from surveys, we would then have to weld our shoot plates exactly where it has to be, so it matches the model. So we can make sure that anything below the pin. Can be moved and, and and welded, but then from the pin up, everything's then 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 accurate. From once that's done, it's mostly it's kind of like a Lego set. You've got each member's got a number, each node has got a number, and each node has got an orientation. So you're going to make sure can all of these nodes. It comes to sight with boxes of these nodes, and you're going to make sure you get the right node. There's an up in the top node, and there's a bottom node. And you got to make sure they rotated the right way because they all look very, very similar. You know, it's, it's, it's a chunk of steel with six machined edges and 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 holes. And if you have the orientation wrong, the ge geometry is not going to work. Um, but you know, if you get that geometry right, then it's a fairly it's a fairly simple thing to install as long as the, you you following the, the right QA QC procedures. The next thing is, you know, a big part is that it's a very congested site. So getting material on the site was a pain. It was during COVID, so there was a whole bunch of shipping shipping issues. Uh, with you know, this made it interesting. And then we also had to make sure we were working within the limits of the contractor's power plan. Um, so we had to be quite quite um, thoughtful in terms of how the material was made, what sequence it was shipped. Um, so we had we had we had quite a detailed install methodology, and then also with the shoring towers, because the like on the the atrium section, um, you know when it's all in, it's great, but you you need to be able to shore it as you go, and we need to be able to check the elevations of the structure um, to make sure that the structure is at the right height. Um, so this is just a. a a quick video showing the installation. So there's that was the original site. So quite small. When we got on site, it looked something like this. So not much space or doing much. Um, but it was a lot of it is just making sure the installers, I guess, understood the logistics of it, understood, you know, how to get the bolts in, how to lubricate the bolts, what bolts go where. So you could you could start to unpack. And then you can start to, to pre-assemble these little spiders on the, the roof. Um, and once you had these little things assembled, then you can start going. You know, you can start getting the, you could, you 
exploring it, you'll start bolting it. Um, this is the kind of normal uh, thing on site. So that we did have the whole HM scaffolded. Um, and we did have the, I said, the, the shore tower locations going. So what we would do is we would we would tack weld all of the edge um, shoe plates, um, and then you can see, obviously we we have to see the 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 the, the mountain, uh, <laughs> and then just track progress, how we go and where we go, and making sure that everything fits, um, you know, sequencing of things. So and once the once the once the atrium section is that was done, all the geometry was right. Then we obviously finalize all of the welding, um, and then we you know making sure because it, this thing this whole roof can can move. So making sure that we've allowed for the temperature movements, and then all the bolts need to be torqued. So we had a skin we had a device that we could we could check and make sure that they are they all talk to the to, to the correct values. And then that's that's the roof as it as it as it goes from the atrium and it falls down to the um well yeah from the from the top and it falls down to the bottom and that's essentially the last uh steel beams going in. I was very grateful at that stage that everything fit. So there wasn't I was actually really impressive. There wasn't any fabrication errors. Every node was right, every tube was right, every piece of glass was right, which is which is which is good. <coughs> Um, yeah, and the sort of images on the on the on the right hand side just showed the sort of installation sequence. So we had every single lift plan. So so we knew exactly what the weight was um, on that on the sequencing. Regarding the glass, it is a, a very similar process. So you know you've got hundreds of pieces of glass. Everyone's different, um, and just making sure that you get uh, the right piece of glass in the, the right place. It's rotated right, and it's not putting upside down. So as long as you get those things right, then it then it fits. Um, so you know, in this is just a short video showing the same thing. So we would mount the, the edge clamps on the glass. The glass was low E coated and had quite a quite a dense uh, fritz on it for heat. That's that's when you mount the the floating clamps. Same thing. It's just about guys on site really understanding the drawings and the logistics of it. And then being very meticulous on the QA, QC um, of the glass, the glass joints, doing a number of water tests on it. And then obviously flashing, getting the flashings all the way in. And there's a there's a gutter on the one edge as well. So there's quite a lot of quite a lot of logistics needed to get it right. Um, you know, and then a big part of the the design and the building was the idea that you had to. Keep they had these they had these beautiful cork trees along the front of the facade. Um, so part of the design brief was making sure that the the cork trees were when 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 were not armed. So tricky building and lifting around these cork trees. Um, and then, but also, so the 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 purpose was at the end of the, the building, there's a relationship between the building and the um, and the surrounding in environment. Uh, which is quite a nice um, aspect there. So now, I mean, I'm quite quick with my presentation. That was off now. So I've just got a, I've just got a, a couple of pictures I can, I can run through. But you, you, you can get a, get a sense now. You've got the, 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 the glass section. You've got the roof with the photovoltaic panels. You've got this full nose, this white section that, that runs around, which was also really tricky to build and to engineer because the geometry of it, 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 it needs to have a, a, a um, really um low rise curve and then it has to match the freeform. So looking at the at the interface but between those two elements and then the actual freeform roof, it's hard to see in the picture. What we ended up doing is we ended up breaking it into three separate roofs because if we had it as one roof, the, the temperature movements were were quite a lot. And you end up getting some 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 quite high local moments at the two canopies. Um, and it also made it harder harder to to build. So we ended up having this central section, and then we had an east canopy, and then we had a west can canopy, and we just had an expansion joint in between them. Even though there was no building joints there, it just made it easier to build. You can see some in that picture, you can see a couple of pieces of glass that look darker. So those are just clean pieces of glass because those we we broke, well, four or five pieces of glass broke during install. 
So we had to leave those pieces in, we had to get new glass, and then we had to replace that. So that's just clean glass. Um, yeah, and so it ended up being quite an interesting looking um, facade. So quite a, in some ways, a bit of a contrast to the existing university, but I think it was a, quite a nice, um, quite a nice blend of trying to get some some new form, new material, and sort of match it with the really nice existing old old buildings um, on the, on the on the campus. And you can see, so this is on the um, on the western side, where we had these we had these three three columns on that, 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 that came down and then joined a larger concrete um, concrete uh, column. And then same thing on the eastern side. Uh, so because on the east, because the, the building stepped down. So on, on the eastern side, we ended up having quite tall columns. So what we did there when we were building that, we we had scaffold that was up that supported the structure. Once we had all the structure in, we then lifted the columns, we we dropped it through the structure. And then at the at the bottom um, where we attached it, we had also a sleeve that we could adjust. And at the top of the columns, we had a sleeve. So we could adjust it that the columns, that the angles were right. And then once everything's totally fine, then we then we did full well there, and then, then we could drop the drop the scaffold. Um, one of the one of the other elements was this bull nose. So this this segmented um, half round cladding that then wraps around the edge of the, the building and and the idea was that 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 ties the whole building together. So even though it's made of a couple of different parts, visually it it sort of uh, it kind of blends it into 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 one part. Um, so that's so uh, the building just opened. I had an opening ceremony two or so weeks ago. So now the actual that actually started um, uh, lessened in the space, but it it it, it creates quite a mass. Environment. One of the design features was they would they wanted this um, atrium space to be quite a flexible use space, so they could they could use it for a number of different things. So that they so the, the building could um, sort of morph based on the requirements of the people inside the, the building. The other thing which they wanted, which I thought was was quite nice, is they wanted the roof structure to to make people question like how things work. So we, which is which from an engineer, I think it's great because often the idea of structure is that it's almost an inconvenience and you try to hide it up afterwards. And <laughs> whereas in this case, they, they they wanted to actually express it and they, they wanted to make people, you know, look at the structure, say, ah, how does the load go from there to there? And geometry, where do these lines go? And just to, to again, since the building is there for design thinking, you, you want to try to create an environment that's conducive to design. So that's it. From an engineer, that made me very, that made me very happy. Um, so this was the this was the opening of the of the school. So this was a uh, they had Nikasa there. Um, so I think they had quite a nice time. Yeah, so I think they had quite a nice opening ceremony. I was not invited, which I was very sad about, but it was still it, from the from the videos, it looked nice. And I think that's pretty much it. Eh? So that's the that's just the sort of end of the end of the, the building. I didn't want to I don't want to hop on too long and I didn't want to show too many populations and all that stuff. But uh, I hope that gave a nice um, overview of the project.